Hey guys, and you are watching the Cincy Junior Sabbath School Show. My name is Kunedu. And my name is Abby. Hey Kunedu, what lesson are we on today? We are on lesson 11 for PowerPoint and Carter Stone books. Abby, we're online, can we find the books? You can find the PowerPoint book at www.juniorpowerpoints.org and the Cornerstone book at cornerstoneconnections.net. Hope you guys can go check that out. The title for the PowerPoint lesson is Brave Hearts. The power text is found from 1 Samuel 14, verses 6. And it says, Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of the of those uncircum of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by man by many or by few. Amen. Amen. The PowerPoint says that we praise God who calls us to make a difference for others. Amen. 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 Is Jesus in me? The key text is 19 verses 8 to 9. And it says, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my positions to the poor, and pay back four times them. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And make sure you guys stay tuned for the, both the PowerPoint and the Cornerstone Lessons. Hello everyone, my name is Emanuela. And my name is My name is Brian, a Farian to me. And we do have a special guest here with us today, so can you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Yes, my name is Amenia Ponkwati Senior. I'm a student pastor at Andrews University. Thank you for joining us today. So before we start, I'll give us a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for we thank you for allowing us to meet here together to learn about your word. Lord, I ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to speak through us and also guide us and also those who are watching as well. Speak through them and allow them to learn something from this and apply it to their lives. And I ask this in your mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So CB Radio does replay our videos um, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So does Obra TV and Hope TV repeats our videos Sundays at 12 p.m. and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. So now we're going to move on to our PowerPoint discussion. Today we are on Lesson 11 and the title is Brave Hearts. And the power text is found from 1 Samuel 14 verse 6. So now we'll have Brian give us a summary. So lesson 11, during that lesson, so King Saul and Prince Jonathan went out to war against Philistine, an army of Philistines. They were greatly outnumbered, so they were hiding in bushes and caves, waiting for God to give them something to do. By then, most of the men ended up depressed and then Saul decided that he would speak to God, seeing as he was getting impatient, 
So he went to one of the high priests, told him to bring the Ark of the Covenant and stretch out his hand for God to tell him what to do. And then once God told Saul what to do, Saul did as such what God told him. And then the Philistines started running away from the Israelites and the men who were hiding in the bush came out and started chasing the Philistines as they, see they, as they saw they had won. For your summary, Brian, so now we're going to have Michelle and Pastor join us in the discussion. So the first question for the PowerPoint discussion is, have you ever been frustrated because bad people were in charge while the good people just stood around and did nothing? Um, yes, I have. Because there was this one time a child in my school was getting bullied and I couldn't do anything because I would get in trouble if I helped either person. And there was teachers who watched the child get bullied and did nothing at all. And Michelle? Um, frustrated times. I feel like the good person tries, but they just overpowered by the bad person. And Pastor, what is your response? Yes, uh, I remember back in Ghana some years ago, uh, I visited a sick friend in a hospital and there a lady brought a sick child who was in need of medical But unfortunately, the doctors, they watched the child die. I was very frustrated. So the next question for the PowerPoint question is, who are we fighting and why is spiritual armor important? As we're fighting the devil, spiritual armor would be important because God's the one who's protecting us. Um, we're fighting Satan and the where we're fighting is a spiritual war so we can't really do that by ourselves and we need spiritual help from God mm -hmm. and pastor yes I want to read uh, quickly read the text from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 it says that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities powers against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So in a nutshell, I want to say that the battle that we are fighting is not physical, but spiritual. And in, in order for us to succeed in this battle, we need to put on the whole armor of God. So the next question is, in what other instances in the Bible did someone ask for a sign from God and received one? There's many parts of the Bible where someone's asked for a sign from God and has received one. There's when Pharaoh asked Moses if his God was real. So then God decided to tell Moses what to do. Like when he put down his staff, when he brought upon the seven plagues of Egypt and so on. And Pastor? Yes, uh, there's a particular sign in uh, Joshua chapter 10. You see, Joshua is the leader of Israelites. Um, Joshua asked God to, I mean, call the moon and the sun to stand still in order for them to defeat their enemies. And God being so good, he made the, the sun and the moon stand still for the Israelites to avenge the enemies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that you guys are part of our discussion. So any questions I may ask, you can put your answers in the comments below. So the last question for our PowerPoint discussion is, why do you think God doesn't always give us a sign when we ask for one? The reason God wouldn't always give you a sign is because then you'd start relying on God like, oh God, when will I be rich? When will I have this? When will I have that? You'd start relying too much on God and stop working for yourself. Instead of building up faith, you're building up somewhere where you can just lean when you need help. Um, I also agree with what Brian said. 
and past. Yes. Uh, yes. Sometimes God intentionally, I'll use the word intentionally. God intentionally refuses to give us a sign because God wants to see if you still remain faithful to him without that sign. Yeah. Thank you guys for your answers. So now we're going to move on to our riddle for today. And the riddle for today is place full of stones, a bush and a rock, somewhere to hide away from the shock. I must not be touched and of heaven I am token. I thundered loud when the tablets were broken. What am I? So I'll read it one more time. Place full of stones, a bush and a rock, somewhere to hide away from the shock. I must not be touched, and of heaven I'm token. I thundered loud when the tablets were broken. What am I? So I'll say the answer at the end. So before we start our cornerstone discussion, we are going to go for a quick intermission. So, so now we're going to move on to our cornerstone discussion, and then we are also on lesson 11 for the cornerstone, and the title is You First, and the key text is found from 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. So now we'll have Michelle give us the summary. Um, the story is about when Jesus was going to Jericho, and Zacchaeus heard about it, and he couldn't see because he was short, so he climbed the tree to see Jesus, and when Jesus saw that, he said he would go to his house. But when the people heard it, they were talking about how Jesus was going with the sinner. And uh, Zacchaeus said that the people that he had cheated them the money, he would repay them back four times. Thank you for your summary, Michelle. So now we'll have Brian and Pastor join us in the discussion. So the first question for the Cornerstone discussion is, how can pride and ambition lead to destruction if many claim that that's what built them up? Um, because pride and ambition, um, it makes you selfish and you look down upon others and you try to build yourself up and you don't really care about what happens to others. Mm -hmm. And Brian? There's a difference between pride and self-belief. Like if you're to just believe in yourself, that's different from being prideful. If you're prideful, you're going to keep on boasting about what you have. And then once it's gone, you're going to start giving up because that was all you had. And pastor. Yes. Uh, you see, when someone becomes proud, he always thinks about himself without seeking the welfare of others. So it is not, it's, it's never good to be a proud person. Thank you. Again, I'd like to remind our viewers that you guys are a part of our discussion. So any questions I may ask, you can put them in your answer in the comments below. So the next question is, why do you think James and John's mother asked Jesus to put her two sons on the left and right of his throne in heaven? I'm sorry. Uh, when Jesus said he was going to Zacchaeus' house, the people became upset and said he's going to a sinner's home. Why do you think that they said that, it, why do you think that they were upset that he was going to Zacchaeus' house if they were sinners as well? Um, I think it's because, uh, I mean, I guess everybody knew Zacchaeus was a sinner and the sin that they do, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't come out as the sin that he does because he's a tax collector, collector and he cheats everybody, so everybody knows that. But the sin that they do, they hide it away from other people. Mm -hmm. And Brian? So the reason why they were upset that Jesus was going to Zacchaeus' house was because Jesus is meant to be the son of man. So they were expecting Jesus to be the same person. He wouldn't follow sinners, but follow people that would follow him. So they started to get upset when they went to his house after he's a tax collector. He's been taking their money and keeping it to himself. Uh, why do you think the Bible, I'm sorry, uh, Pastor, uh, what is your answer? 
Yes, uh, uh, I, I quite agree with what they said. But you see, uh, the Israelites at that time did not want to see tax collectors. In the sense that, <laughs> you see, these tax collectors were assigned a particular place where they were, I mean, collect their, their tax from. And these tax collectors would go and pay money to the government. So, for example, when I come to your house to collect a tax, I can collect any amount of money that I like from. So because of that, the Israelites at that time didn't want to see the face of these tax collectors. So that's why they were not happy when Jesus wanted to go to Zacchaeus' house. Thank you. Um, the next question is, why do you think the Bible emphasizes on the fact that Zacchaeus was a short man, and because of that, he had to climb a sycamore tree to see Jesus? Um, because Zacchaeus didn't let the fact that he was short um, distract him from trying to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Brian? I think the reason why the Bible portrayed Zacchaeus Zacchaeus is sure is because they want to show that there's nothing that would stop you from seeing Jesus and being with him. And Pastor, what is your answer? Yes. Yes. The reason why the Bible lays much emphasis on that is that you see, sometimes we allow the circumstances that we find ourselves in to I mean prevent us from what we want to do. And it's a typical example of. Zacchaeus, because of his stature, it was very difficult for him to see Jesus, but he did not allow his stature to prevent him from seeing Jesus. So no matter the situation we find ourselves in, we must try our possible best to do what we can to, I mean, move forward. Thank you for your answer. So the next question is, what did Jesus mean when he said, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Um, he was justifying the reason as to why he was going with um, Zacchaeus and it was because he didn't come to save those who had already found salvation, he had come to save those who were lost. Mm -hmm. And Brian? He was just saying that they all came from one person, the bloodline of Abraham, that bloodline which was also chosen by God. And then, yeah, basically he's saying that they came from the bloodline of Abraham, meaning that they're chosen by God to go to heaven. And Pastor, what is your answer? Yes, uh, I quite agree with my sister. You see, the statement justifies the reason why Jesus came to this world. And the point is, Jesus still knows the heart of every man. And he's still seeking and saving those who are lost. And he's still bringing salvation to many souls who trust in him. And the last question for the Cornerstone discussion is, how can we gain salvation? Um, we can gain salvation through Jesus and if we believe and have faith in him. And Brian, what is your answer? We can gain salvation by repenting, being born again, being baptized, becoming pure. And Pastor? Yes, I, I believe that. This question is a very important question for every Christian to ponder upon. Uh, in order for us to uh, gain salvation, we need to let go of the sins that we cling to or the sins that we hold on to. Without that, we can never achieve salvation. Thank you guys for your answers. So now we'll have Pastor give us a moral lesson for both of the lessons. Yes, thank you very much for the opportunity given me to take part in this discussion. Uh, there are a lot of moral lessons from the stories that we have shared so far, but these are the, le uh, the lessons that stood out to me. Uh, the one that has to do with uh, that of Joshua is, you see, I wrote something down. God does not always use many people to accomplish his work. 
you must understand that God does not always use many people to accomplish his work. So if the question is, or the answer is, if God was able to use Jonathan and his armor bearer, only two people, to deliver the Israelites from their enemies, it means that God can use you and me to change the face of the world. If we trust God and seek to do what is right in his eyes, he can do great things through us. God can bless us in order for us to also be a blessing to the world. Now, coming to the story of Zacchaeus, I wrote down two important moral lessons. Number one, do whatever it takes to get closer to Jesus. Do whatever it takes to get closer to Jesus. Looking at the story, Zacchaeus was short in nature. In Ghana, we say he's a dwarf. But because he was so anxious to see Jesus, he went ahead of Jesus and climbed a sycamore tree. So I'm saying that Zacchaeus did what was necessary to get to Jesus, regardless of what others thought about him. So my friends, my brothers, my little ones, we must do whatever it takes for us to see Jesus. Physically, Zacchaeus climbed a tree, but I'll say spiritually, in order for us to see Jesus, we must be prayerful. We must read the Bible and we must go out there to share the word of God. Number two, do whatever it takes to change your life. Do whatever it takes to change your life. And from the story of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus took drastic measures to right the wrongs he has done and to live his life in a better and more righteous way. My brothers and my sisters, in this last days, there are a number of sins that we still hold on to. And if we don't let those sins go or that sins go, I'm afraid we cannot, or salvation will never come to our house. So I'm saying that we have to do whatever it takes to change our life. And in order for us to do that, we must pray for the guidance and the unction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for your moral lesson. So now we're going to go back to our riddle for today. And the riddle again is, place full of stones, a bush, and a rock, somewhere to hide away from the shock. I must not be touched, and of heaven I'm token. I thundered loud when the tablets were broken. What am I? So what do you guys think the answer is? Um, I'm a guess thunder. Thunder? Okay. Yeah. Okay, a hint that I'll give you is, is, is a mountain, so. Yeah. Mount Everest? Is that what you're going with? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay. And Brian, what is your answer? Um, it was the mountain that Moses climbed during their tr journey to, from Egypt to Jerusalem. I mean to Jericho. I actually like changed my answer. <laughs> so what's your answer? Mount Sinai? I should. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Pastor, what is there? <laughs> I don't want to guess, but is it Mount Horeb? Um, we'll see when I say the answer. Um, in our comments, <laughs> Ernest said uh, the answer is Mount Sinai. So the answer is Mount Sinai. Um, I should not let you change your answer. I should let you just stay with Mount Everest, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of our show. So, uh, Pastor King, please give us a closing prayer. Sure. Let's pray. Our most gracious and everlasting Father, we want to thank you so much for leading us through these wonderful discussions. It's our humble and our sincere prayer that you help us put into practice the moral lesson from these stories. Bless us and let us, let us be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name have I prayed. Amen. Joining us today, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Go watch our other uh, videos on our YouTube channel at Cincy 
Cincinnati Gunyan SDA Church. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. 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 Bye.